Hello, welcome to this lesson in the Chemistry Tutor. Here we're going to be working on finding the molecular mass of a compound using the ideal gas law. So basically this section is just an application of the ideal gas law. It's not really anything different or harder, it's just using the ideal gas law to accomplish something specifically. And in this case we're going to be learning how to find the molecular mass of a gas. Now remember, um, whenever you look at what comprises a gas, for instance nitrogen N2, um, you can calculate what we call the molar mass, uh, and that's done by looking in the periodic table, looking at the uh, molar mass of nitrogen if it's N2 gas, and multiplying by 2 because they're bound together, and you can get the grams per mole, that's what we call the molar mass, okay? But if you remember back to very, very basic chemistry. When we very first started talking about the concept of a mole and molar mass, those numbers listed on the periodic table, uh, which we now know to be grams per mole, okay, they also correspond to the, what we call the molecular mass, which is in atomic mass units. So if any of that seems unfamiliar or foreign to you, just go back to the very beginning when I start talking about the periodic table, and we talk quite a bit about atomic mass units. So in a problem, if they say, hey, here's some information, figure out what the molecular mass of this gas is, all they're trying to do is ask you how many atomic mass units each gas molecule has. All right, so for instance, uh, in order to make progress, we'll just kind of go down the road here. Recall that we already know the ideal gas law, PV is equal to NRT. Uh, NRT. And you know that if you know the pressure and the volume, uh, and the gas constant and the temperature, if you know these things, then you can always calculate the number of moles of uh, whatever gas you have. So if you want to solve for the number of moles, for instance, in the gas, N is just going to be PV over RT. We just take the RT and divide, and so you, you know how to calculate this. And in fact, for every gas, if you go and measure these things, we actually know how to measure these things. So we can measure these, these properties here. PV, R is a constant, and T. We, we can always do that. So for any gas in real life, you can go measure all those things and calculate the number of moles of gas you have. Because it's easy to, to calculate the volume of the gas. We have gauges to measure the pressure, and of course uh, thermometers or thermocouples to measure the temperature. So we can do this division with the proper constant. We can figure out through this ideal gas law, what the number of moles we have, okay, in the sample. Now once we know how many moles we have, okay, recall uh, capital M is what we call the molar mass. And capital M is equal to grams 